My grandmother had always, she was a great lady, and she had such fantastic ideas, I remember. And when she made lettuce, we had no good way of drying the lettuce. And I would take the lettuce and go like this, paper towel. She had a method of her own. She took a colander. And of course, first of all, we would wash the lettuce. That goes without saying. I would wash it once. My grandmother would wash it three times. But that's what you have grandmothers for. So there comes the, the lettuce. We were also very fond of spinach. So add some spinach. We would wash it. There goes the spinach. Then she would take something to cover it up, maybe some saran wrap or something else, put it over it, and put a rubber band around it to hold it. And now what she's going to do, she's going to swing it around. And now the water is like these marbles. The water will work its way to the edge, but there are holes. So the water will come out. Isn't she clever? OK, I'll give you a demonstration. Be careful, because you may get some water on your lecture notes. But I want to show you the, the basic idea behind it. It's very in interesting. So she would go out. She would do this outside, by the way. But uh, I have no choice, so we'll do it here. So there we go. <laughs> you see, this is the way. You dry. Oh, I lost my magnetic strawberry. That's a detail in the process. So you end up with you end up with dry and clean and nice lettuce. This is 801 at work, and this is clearly an early version of a centrifuge. Now my grandmother's method, very tragically, has been replaced lately with something that you can buy at Crate and Barrel. We have it here. Um, it is very boring. It's very decadent. Put the salad in here, and all you do is you rotate, and it dries. It's a centrifuge. This, this is actually a high-tech version of the much more sophisticated invention of my grandmother. And, and it's nowhere nearly as exciting. The days of romance are really over. But that's the way it goes. I'm now going to make a connection between rotation on the one hand and centripetal acceleration on the other. I'm going to make a connection between centripetal acceleration and perceived gravity. The way that you perceive gravity. I'm going to put you in various positions and then ask you, what is the direction of gravity? I'm going to create artificial gravity for you. And let's first do it as follows. I first hang you on a string. There you are. Like this. And I ask you, do you feel a push or a pull? And you say, yeah, I feel a pull. And you feel a pull in this direction. So now I ask you, ah, in what direction do you perceive gravity? And you think I'm crazy. You're right in that case, but nevertheless, you say gravity is in this direction. It's the other direction as the pool. OK, so far so good. So now I'm going to put you just standing on the floor. And I say to you, do you feel a push or a pull? And you say, yeah, I feel a push. I feel a push from the floor up. So I say, in what direction do you perceive gravity? You say, well, come on, don't be boring. Gravity is in this direction. Notice, in both cases, you tell me that gravity is always in the opposite direction of either you pull or you push. 
OK. Now I'm going to be a little rough on you. Now I'm going to swing you around on a string, just as if you were an apple. And I'm going to do this with you. And you're at the end of the apple. You are the apple, not at the end. You're at the end of the string. You are the apple. So there you are. Here. Who are you? And I say, do you feel a push or a pull? And you say, yeah, I do. I feel a pull. Fine. In which direction? I feel a pull in this direction. OK. So now I say to you, in what direction do you perceive gravity? And you say, well, in the opposite direction as pull. So now you perceive gravity in this direction, which is very real for you. Now, in this particular case, since the direction changes all the time, since I swirl you around, you will, of course, get dizzy like hell, but that's a detail. You will perceive gravity in this direction when you're here, and when you're here, you will perceive gravity in that direction. So you perceive gravity in the direction which is opposing the pull. And the faster I rotate you, the stronger will be the pull, and therefore, the stronger will be your perceived gravity. A carpenter would use a plumb line. And the carpenter would just hold the plumb line like this. The pull is in this direction. And so the carpenter says, OK, perceived gravity is in that direction. The carpenter happens to be right in this case. Gravity is in this direction. But it's the same idea. The plumb line is being used to find the direction of gravity. Think of this as being a plumb line, defined, used to define the direction of gravity. Now, you're in outer space. You're going to play Captain Kirk. And you're in a space station, and there is no gravity. So we're going to make some gravity for you. We're going to create some artificial gravity. So let this be your space station. It's a big wheel, a radius of about 100 meters. And we'll make it very fancy for you. We'll make some corridors around, like here. We'll make it a very interesting space station, like so. And like so. And this is rotating around with angular velocity omega. You're here. There you are. You go around. Therefore, non negotiable, you're going around with a certain velocity v. This v equals omega r. And therefore, you require a centripetal acceleration towards the center. That is non-negotiable. Where do you get it from? 